Fascism, capitalism and decay. The equating of socialism and fascism is something that you may hear a lot. The myth being that both systems want big government, less freedom and less democratic rights. This is absolutely not the case. In reality, fascism and socialism have nothing in common. While the goal of socialists is to change the world and bring about a more equitable political, economic and social system, fascism is an attempt to do the opposite. To stop any change and to uphold the status quo through violent means and methods. Fascism is, put simply, the final defense of capitalism. To quote German Marxist Clara Zetkin in her 1923 essay on the subject, Fascism is the concentrated expression of the general offensive undertaken by the world bourgeoisie against the proletariat. Fascism arises out of a want by the bourgeoisie to stay in power, and so it effectively maintains, strengthens and emboldens the relationships between people, and doesn't make or change them to any real degree. It is, in essence, still capitalism, and this is important to understand. The vast majority of industry under fascist rule is owned by private corporations. They reduce regulations and public ownership while helping the ruling class. Fascists posture as populist and anti-establishment when in actuality its leaders like Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler and Francisco Franco worked closely with capitalists and even monarchs during their rise and their rule. In fact, the first mass privatization effort of previously state-run industries in history occurred in Nazi Germany, and it was the King of Italy who appointed Mussolini as Prime Minister. Due to the fact that fascism aims to uphold the capitalist mode of production at all costs, any time fascists have risen to power, they have tried to destroy socialist movements, trade unions, and any other organization that fights for workers. They have imprisoned, tortured, and killed socialists whenever they've come to power, fulfilling the primary aim of fascism in stopping any sort of radical shift in power towards the working classes. This can be seen most prominently through Nazi Germany, where the first people taken to concentration camps were members of the Communist Party of Deutschland, the KPD. In order to refute and repress workers organizing and taking power, fascism advocates what's known as class collaborationism. Instead of trying to resolve conflicts between classes, fascists try to ally the owners and workers together against who they see as common enemies, someone who they can blame for society's problems. They have blamed socialists, Jewish people, people of color, members of the LGBTQ community, immigrants, and any other disadvantaged group. Since these people obviously aren't the problem, the capitalist system continues to fall apart and the fascists try to find a new scapegoat. Fascism is thus in a state of, as the Italian author Umberto Eco put it, permanent warfare. It is also important to understand that besides its core objective of upholding the status quo, fascism isn't really a coherent ideology. Sure, we can ascribe certain universal characteristics to it, totalitarianism, market-based economics, traditionalism, nationalism, but beyond that it differs greatly based on where it arises. Pinochet is different from Suharto, is different from Salazar, and so on and so on. This is vital, as it tells us that when it comes back, the fascists won't necessarily be brown shirts and want to reopen the concentration camps. They will have changed their messages and tactics to fit today's society. Therefore, vigilance and anti-fascist organizing from the left is of utmost importance. But how do we fight fascism? The defeat of fascism must be on all fronts, not only through force, we must also beat it both politically and ideologically. A first task must be solidarity. The workers' movement must unite against fascism. Then we must at once formulate aims and goals for the movement. Structuralist anti-fascism, while certainly helpful, is not a viable long-term strategy or a replacement for a disciplined and organized struggle. As long as we have capitalism, the struggle against fascism is never over. This is something socialists cannot afford to forget. It is only revolution which is based on a new class. Fascism is not based on any class that was not already in power. Antonio Gramsci. The MLC recommends the following texts in order to do further reading on the nature of fascism. They will be linked in the description. This week, on Monday at 8pm Greenwich Mean Time, in our Discord server we will be hosting a reading of the essay Fascism by Clara Zetkin in order to further our education on this subject. You can join our server using the invite link in the description.
The Marxist Literature Collective is an organization which aims to educate as wide of an audience as possible on socialism, anti-imperialism, and progressive issues using a Marxist framework. We do this through a combination of online content, the links for which can be found in the description below, and through action in our local communities. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar content. You can also find us on Patreon, where we offer exclusive content for patrons who help support the MLC.